Uh, my name is Bill Spencer, uh, Senior Director for uh, Microsoft Teams Engineering, and I'm pleased today uh, to welcome uh, Eric McPherson from 3M, and he'll be describing the Post-it app integration with Microsoft Teams. One of the most popular tools in the American and probably international business are the Post-it notes, and uh, Eric will show how they've integrated them into Microsoft Teams. Take it away, Eric. Great, thank you, Bill. And thanks to everybody who's taken a little bit of time to learn about the Post-it app for Microsoft Teams here, whether you're live or watching the recording back. Um, the Post-it app for Microsoft Teams is more or less a digital whiteboard solution. And we'll talk a lot about how we're trying to take the familiar world of using Post-it notes and apply that into a digital space, uh, especially with lots of us working remote, working hybrid, we believe there's a, a strong opportunity to take the simplicity, the fun, um, the way people like to work with post-it notes kind of in real life in a conference room and apply that into a digital setting. And so that's exactly what we're um, aiming to do with the post-it app for Microsoft Teams. So before I dive in a little bit more, I think we're gonna play a, a video that just gives a little bit of a highlight of the app and of the product itself that will hopefully kind of get people excited about it. Excellent. Thank you, Eric. Please take Thank it you. away. All right. So hopefully that gives you an overview of kind of what the product is all about. But we'll dive into a bunch of these features in a little more detail here. But before we get into the features of the app itself, I do want to talk just for a minute about why the Post-it app. You know, there's there are lots of digital whiteboard tools out there. Um, and what do we think kind of separates the Post-it app from a lot of those existing tools? So First and foremost, simplicity and ease of use. So we've we've gotten a lot of feedback that um, for people that you know people really range in level of tech savviness and um, comfortability with new apps and new tools, especially um, given the remote work and hybrid work that's been more or less forced upon a lot of people in the past few years. And so uh, some of the existing digital whiteboard tools out there have tons and tons of features, can get really detailed and into all sorts of complicated uh, workflows and things and have really great use cases for that. But a lot of people just need a really simple tool for quick brainstorms, quick ideation, a Kanban board, um, whatever it is, you know, just a weekly status call where you keep track of certain projects and things. And that's where you don't need a, a tool that has such a, a steep learning curve. You don't need a, a facilitator or somebody that's needs to be a, an expert to help train everybody in for a half hour to an hour to, to learn a new tool. And so that's what we're really trying to do is service that space with a tool that's intuitive, easy to use, relies on uh, some familiar concepts of using post-it notes in real life, but in a digital space, which kind of allows it to be that simple, easy to use tool. And, and, and so that's really where our focus is. Um, we also, which is something I'll show towards the end of the demonstration here, have a companion capture app. So you can actually use um, handwritten post-it notes, which which we appreciate. We do still sell those. So, um, uh, But you can use handwritten notes and then capture them with the mobile app on your phone and 
more or less instantly digitize them onto a board. So I'll show how that works later as well. And so that's that's another one of our key differentiators. And then lastly, the brand. So a lot of the digital whiteboard tools out there are, are new startups. Um, the Post-it brand's been around for 40 years. Over, I think it's around 200 million people use Post-it notes um, regularly. And so people are very familiar with this brand. People have a lot of love for this brand. Uh, people get really excited to come up to us and be like, oh, I love Post-it notes. And so seeing something that they're familiar with and comfortable with um, in a digital space it is fun and, and lends itself towards kind of being willing to try and, and trust that this collaboration tool is going to work well for them. And so just a little bit more on some of the feedback we've heard throughout our, our piloting program of this app. And then in our, we, we just launched a few, uh, a few months ago, but people get, uh, just people don't love having to switch between lots of tools and lots of apps. And so that can be frustrating. And so that's where uh, we've integrated the posted app directly into Microsoft Teams. All your boards are saved in Teams. You can add boards um, to a Microsoft Teams call in a few clicks, and now everybody on your call is able to collaborate in real time. And so that's where a lot of other tools or apps may encourage you to leave Microsoft Teams and go use a web-based version. At this time, we actually don't even have a web-based version, but um, we uh, specifically designed the app to work inside of Microsoft Teams, integrate directly in there, and be in that space that people are, you know, people are living in on Microsoft Teams um, every day. And, and so be, not having to leave and being able to be in that comfortable space, um, we've we've heard and learned is, is really a, a great thing. Um, and then a few other things just to call out. Sometimes people say digital brainstorms are a bit clunky. You know, nobody solved this perfectly. And so that's where we're trying to make some of these simple brainstorms and ideation sessions just a little easier to use. And then, as I mentioned, a lot of people still like to use the handwritten or analog post-it notes. And so we, we're trying our best to enable people to be able to do that while also making it easy to digitize those notes and use them um, as part of kind of their digital experience. Um, so with that, I'm going to slide over here and just show you some of the features of the Post-it app for Microsoft Teams here. So I'm going to zoom out just a bit, and we'll talk through some of these features. So you can see here we have a little digital pad of notes. This is kind of the most common way to add a note. And we try to, in a, a few instances, do things that give a little nod to using Post-it notes in real life. So you can see, you know, you actually like drag a note off the digital pad. You can immediately start typing. Um, easy enough to delete those or move them around. You can also add notes to a board just by double clicking as well. I still prefer the digital pad. I think it's more fun, but um, to each their own on that. Now you can also edit notes. So you can um, choose from a, a bunch of different colors. These are actually all real post-it note colors and the real names and everything. So it's kind of a fun nod. We also have three different sizes or you can go rectangle or change the aspect ratio. Um, and then you can also change up to a few different fonts. Now you you might note like that there's not a ton of options here. That's 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 on purpose. We're we're trying to like uh, in this in the vein or in the spirit of keeping things simple, keeping things easy, intuitive, um, not overwhelm users with tons and tons of features and options that are are challenging to work through all of them. Um, so from a navigation or zooming in, zooming out, we have kind of our lower right section down here that's got a lot of the, the table stakes, you know, switch between the hand and the pointer. You can zoom in, zoom out. You also have all your shortcut, which I actually prefer to use the, the scroll button on my mouse so I can scroll up and down. Or if I hold shift, I can scroll left and right. Hold control, you can zoom in and out. Um, so, but we do have kind of all those standard um, digital whiteboard navigation tools down here um, and then groups so groups is probably the most common way people like to organize boards and organize thoughts and ideas and there's a few different ways you can do that so say we have this group of four notes here and we want to group them and just click and highlight them and then we can click on group notes and now it says group a and so i can uh change that if i want i'll just call these basic features um, another thing that I like to show and, and utilize is tools in the lower left here. We can create a new group. And so this creates empty groups. So maybe you're in a, 
you're prepping a board before a call. And when I say prepping, I mean five minutes before the call, not spending hours and hours making some big complicated board. But you just maybe want to have uh, a few, you know, new product ideas or whatever you're going to be working on in that ideation session. You can have groups and resize them and get them ready to go. And then it's easy enough to move no notes in and out of a group from one group to another, um, add, continue to add more groups. So that's, again, a really simple way to be uh, organizing your boards and your notes. All right, so next, we're gonna move into this kind of mint section here and get into a little bit more advanced features. So one thing we've heard a lot is that you get on a digital whiteboard, you get more than three or four people, and it starts, it can get a little chaotic, um, especially, you know, you're working on whatever size laptop you're on, and maybe you're limited in space. And so we've had added two features that are designed to help alleviate that. Um, first, just simply, you can go up to the little ellipses up here, and you can turn cursors off. So you could see my, my colleagues, um, Gina and Liz and Rick, their cursors were flying around. Now they're gone. Um, so if you prefer to do that, but the one that we're more excited about is what we call is Zen mode. And so let's say we're all doing the thing where, all right, everybody take two minutes, come up with new product ideas. And perhaps we have six or seven people on the board. And so it's a little chaotic with the cursors and people adding notes. You can turn on Zen mode and you can see here, all the notes that are notes that I have not created myself get grayed out and as well as the cursors being hidden. So this just gives you a sec, a chance to take those two minutes, work on what you're working on, and it just reduces the distractions. You know, something else we hear is, oh, there's a VP in our call and everybody's kind of looking at what they're doing. And so you can encourage everybody just to turn on Zen mode and take their two minutes. Uh, and then when everybody's ready to go, you can just simply turn it off and everybody's notes um, reappear. Uh, next, something that we've heard is a, a common need in uh, a digital whiteboard space is the ability to vote or prioritize. And so if you go back to tools in the lower left here, we can enable voting and this provides a little plus sign on all notes. So you can vote on both uh, notes as well as uh, groups. So I've actually gone over here and had, you know, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Just you know, perhaps you're having a, a heated debate. And so I'm gonna, I'll click on chocolate and you can see that the votes start to tally and have a running total over here in this, in this panel. When you're done, you can click on done. Now, if you go back to voting, which this little button will appear once you've done it once, but you can always go back and they'll, those votes will stay there and you can always have the opportunity to reset um, as well. So we'll go back over here. Now, another feature that I, I find to be useful and, and fun, kind of another nod to uh, using Post-it notes in real life is search and stack. And so I'm gonna actually go up to the, you, you might notice, oh, I use the word feature in all four of these notes. That is on purpose. So I'm gonna go up to the search bar here, type in feature, and now I you can see I have all the four of these notes get highlighted um, and I'm going to hit stack all. And so now I have a stack of these notes and I can cycle through them if I want. Um, there's always the, there's always the opportunity to unstack them as well. So that's just something that we like to use for organization, perhaps, you know, similar to when you're in a conference room, a whole bunch of notes on the wall and you start to move them around and group them, put them into buckets, that sort of thing. All right. So now we'll move on to. Uh, a few more features that we want to show. Um, next one, explore and pin. And so something you can do when you're uh, when you click on a group of notes, a uh, note or notes, you might be wondering, all right, why does this note say Rolling Stones? So I click on group. I now click on explore topics. And content from Wikipedia, Bing is going to appear here. Now, if this was something more work related, um, files from inside your organization might appear here as well. And it provides you a chance to just to pin things that you might need later. So let's say I'm, uh, maybe I need the Wikipedia page for the Rolling Stones later. I'm going to hit pin. Let's me know that happened. Now, if I exit out of this tab, you see there's a little red dot here up by the pin. And so I go there and the Rolling Stones Wikipedia page has been pinned. 
And then one more thing that's really specific to Microsoft that we are excited about is the ability to export tasks. So we talk a lot about being able to keep the momentum going. You know, you work in a digital brainstorm ideation session. Typically, there's more actions that then need to be taken. And so we've wanted to provide a little bit of a, a way to uh, make that easier. And so let's say I have this note here that says first draft of creative brief. I click on that note. Now I can click on export task, and this will actually allow me to assign this task to somebody um, within Microsoft Planner. And so then you can uh, export the task here. So just another way to integrate into another Microsoft tool and to help kind of keep that momentum going with, uh, with the work that needs to happen after an ideation session. Um, all right, so we've made it to the final feature that I wanna show. Um, the capture, which I mentioned at the beginning, the ability to capture handwritten notes. So I am going to queue up my the posted app for Microsoft Teams, which has a little purple background in the App Store. Um, and it's just a very simple app. And it when I open it up, it knows I'm in this board already. And so I'm going to hit Add Notes. And I'm just talking through this. We'll show a little video that shows these visuals in just a second. But then I hit Capture Notes. And I have a couple of notes just above my desk here. So I'm gonna hold the capture and then I'm gonna hit add to board. And you just saw these appear and you can see my handwriting's not very good. So clearly these were, were written out and not typed out. Um, and the these notes were um, added to the board right here. And so you can, uh, you can move these notes around. You can uh, manipulate them as you need to. Something else I like to show if I go back to search, and I type in capture, you can see it's not a still image. These notes are actually have optical character recognition or handwriting recognition. So they are digitized and part of all of the, the work that you have out here. So. So this is going to show you the mobile experience of the app within Microsoft Teams just to show that once you're in a board, it knows you're in that board, this capture companion capture app. And so then you go and you capture notes, you hit add to board. Now it provides you a chance to fix any handwriting recognition issues. Um, if you have bad handwriting like me, sometimes that, that can happen. Um, and then you add them to the board and they shoot up there like magic. So that uh, that really, gets us through the, the majority of the features. Uh, one, one last thing just to note, you can very easily share your board with um, other colleagues inside your organization, organization uh, who, have, uh, who have a seat or access to, to the Post-it app. So you can either create a link or type in their email address in here. Um, so that's, there's no way for somebody to get into one of a board you've created unless you invite them or unless you open that board in a Microsoft Teams call. That's a, that's a question we often get is kind of how the how the security works there. So um, with that, I've in a couple spots here put my email address. Um, and so I'm happy to anybody that wants to follow up, feel free to email me at emacperson2 at mmm.com. Can you um, enlarge that just a bit, Eric? Yeah, let's. Let's uh I want to make sure uh the, the folks watching the video later can see that. Perfect. Yep, okay. There we go. Awesome. Well, I have to say I'm blown away. Uh we've got a few questions that I'll get to in just a second, but um the capture uh functionality is super helpful. I've I've had uh experiences planning products where we had entire whiteboards and conference rooms full of post-it notes and uh, in fact you know you'd, you'd reserve the room because you didn't want anyone to come in and disturb your your post-it notes it would be so helpful to have had this feature then and to capture them and um, bring them into this cool whiteboard experience uh, the other thing that really impressed me is um, the uh, the sharing oh and the integration with planner cool so just so i understand everything you've shown now is all within teams and and this app is designed right now to run only in Teams, so you don't have a browser version. Do I did I understand that correctly? That is correct. Yep, we launched the kind of initial launch here is specific to Microsoft Teams, so only Microsoft Teams users can. We do 
We do have a free version of the posted app in app stores that anybody can access, but it doesn't have the live collaboration aspect to it. So we kind of took that app that's been around for a few years and built it out into this Microsoft Teams application that has the live collaboration and everything I just I just showed. Great. OK, so a couple questions. Uh, one is regarding Zen mode that while you're in Zen mode, other folks might layer the same uh, post it notes in the same spot. You can see in Z in Zen mode what other folks are up to, so you're not going to have positional conflicts. Yeah, you're absolutely is, right. Is that a, so that that's why we have the, the the grayed out squares to avoid yeah. exactly what you're describing. Because when we thought of that feature originally, I think we thought it'd be even cooler to maybe not have anything like this. But then that would be a, that exact problem would certainly happen. So that's why we kind of landed on this. A great name feature, and and I like the way it, it works to avoid conflict. Uh, the second question was, was regarding uh, pricing and uh, licensing. Yes, so we are purposefully, you know, given the fact that it's a le there's less features, you know, it's a simple tool. We are priced accordingly, so it's two ninety nine per user per month. We do offer a thirty day free trial, and then we do offer some discounts for annual pricing and high number of seats uh, for enterprise. Excellent. So, uh, you know, we. The reality is we still make uh, the majority of our, our, our revenue from selling post-it notes, but this is kind of a, a broad entry point into uh, into this space. And so we're trying to price accordingly and make it so that it is a, a tool that can be used more broadly versus a few teams that might use other other digital whiteboard project, uh, products. Well, I have to say I can see this you know starting small within individual groups and spreading like wildfire because it's a very general purpose whiteboard with a lot of uh, a lot of functionality. Uh, I appreciate the pricing, uh, but I think there's there's actually uh, some great functionality in there. Um, where is the data stored? Is it within the customer's tenant or is it within a 3M uh, database in uh, Azure or similar cloud? I'm going to let Rick answer this, even though I just asked him to remind me this answer the other day, but he always he knows how to answer this one properly. And Rick, feel free to uh, turn on your video and, 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 and jump in to answer. Yeah, not a problem. My video camera actually is here and all of you are up here, but I'm going to actually echo what Brad typed in the chat, which is the back end is a cloud service. So the data is actually isolated, encrypted and stored in a 3M uh, a tenant. So in our subscription tenant. It's one we actually set up specifically and isolated from the rest of 3M for this Post-it uh, solution. So that's how we've handled it. Understood. All right. Thank you. Um, are the colors of notes, uh, at, notes attributes, are the colors attributes? So you can say all of the uh, red ones are more urgent and we want to uh, get to those first. So you do basically a sort or a filter on red ones. Or, or is, sorry, or uh, for example, only create tasks out of the ones that the team agreed to turn into red notes, red like my shirt, I guess. Uh, and then that would be something that increases the power of the note because the attribute can be used to automate a lot of things. Thank you. That's a really good question, and I think that falls in the camp of the backlog of features and things that we're working on and figuring out how to prioritize. So the, the short answer is no, you cannot do that right now, but um, you're not. that's not the first time we've heard that, and so we're, we're collecting all sorts of feedback to help us know which new features we should prioritize to launch next. So we'll, we'll add that one to the list of data points for uh, that specific feature. A uh, couple of questions because of my focus on global financial services, especially banking, uh, where security, compliance, et cetera, retention, e-discovery, uh, those are very important. The data being stored somewhere else would likely be a problem, so just raising that as an awareness issue. And a second question, uh, you might have addressed this and I might have missed it, my apologies. When I am seeing this board, can each one of these be uh, uh, pinned to specific channels or sub channels or teams or how, how would that work so that it can be maximized in terms of use but not have just like a flood of uh, nodes flying all around does that so make I, sense I, are you talking about kind of storing your boards or 
when I when I add uh, you know the app to my Teams um, platform, yes. I'll see it here. But when I am starting to use this board with the stickies on there, can I have different ones for different chats, different meetings, different yes. channels, etc.? Yep, absolutely. So here's how it gets stored. So you can see I have all sorts of boards. So I like to use the the search function up here, you know, demo, and I can find my boards. But you can create a new one here. Uh, but then also, I think something that I find to be really helpful is when I'm in a, I have a few weekly calls now where we have a board that's established for that weekly call. And when I go to share a board in that Microsoft Teams call, it automatically calls up the board from the same one from last week. So I would have to actively go in and choose a different one um, if I wanted to. So yeah, yeah, certainly, yes, you can create boards for different meetings, different topics, that sort of thing. And it so gets. I was wondering, you're doing such a great job integrating it with tasks and planner, et cetera. It would be great for version 3.0 or something if when a notes board is finalized, whether by color or select all, if those could be sort of gathered up and put into one note, which is obviously like master holder of notes for a lot of people. So that would be something worth your product group looking at, just free suggestions. Absolutely. The free version of the app I mentioned has a lot more export functionality. And so that's export is really high on the list of being able to export this to OneNote, PowerPoint, Excel uh, that, uh, as another way to be able to kind of keep, keep the momentum going and uh, keep con work, working on whatever it is your output was from a, from a meeting. We'll look for that to come soon. All right. Well, uh, Eric, thank you so much. Everyone at 3M who participated in this really appreciate the support of this call as well as the uh, support of teams with this great integration. I think this is very exciting and um, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to use it myself. I, I know in the chat here, we've had quite a few people express their love for post-it notes, and this has really brought it into uh, the modern workplace with your integration of Microsoft Teams. Uh, thank you everyone um, who was able to join uh, our, our presentation today. And I think you'll find this a great example of uh, the innovations uh, we're uh, introducing into Microsoft Teams in collaboration with great partners like 3M. Thank you all very much.